Well, welcome back to Wretches and Wrenches. As I noticed, I said the wrong thing last time. Today I'm going to pinch a little bit of a bind. Next two weekends I'm going to be busy. won't be able to make a video unless I try and get some done on Sunday, I guess. Some will try because I have a video coming out this Monday and then two weeks later another video. So February is covered. But I'm going to be behind uh, if I don't do a video for the next couple of weeks. So today, being Sunday, February 11th, I'm going to try and knock out something quick, not too hard. At least, you know, that's what I'm thinking anyway. But this is a project I had in mind a couple months ago. I posted about it on Instagram not following the Wretches and Wrenches Instagram channel that I hardly ever update but it'd be on there it'd be on there uh, let me show you what I'm working with I got a tan interior in the old F-150 let's not don't look at that don't look at that uh and it's fine like it looks it's all right a little faded on top of the doors there everything else perfectly fine and all right except for the steering wheel looks like trash but man if this doesn't irk me right here like why is it coming off of here and it ain't coming off of nothing else like look at this this is the same material Ain't no, ain't no tan coming off that. Looking like trash. So, I bought some paint. It is not tan paint. We're going to try something different. Something a little radical. Okay, I used to do this all the time in my 20s, but I'm 43 now. But this would be like a throwback to my 20s. And we're going to paint the bezel on the dash here to match the outside of the truck. Not perfectly, because I've... I wasn't going to go through all the trouble looking at paint codes and stuff. But I got a color that's kind of pretty close to the outside of the truck. We're going to take this off. We're going to sand it. We're going to prime it. And then we're going to paint it. See, see what it looks like. Worst thing. I mean, push comes to shove. or just go to a junkyard or something. Get another one. Try something else. But let's roll the intro and get started on some pss, pss action. what I'm thinking <clears throat> is we're going to mask off the vents because the vents are still pretty tan they're still all right I, and I think it would be a cool contrast to have the tan vents still and we're going to tape off the keyhole here and stuff for the airbag and the vent selector which I'm do dads and then we're going to sand the rest of it down and I got some sandable primer and I got some whatever color this is Ford dark blue and we're gonna see how she turns out
here she is all finished up I did pretty good that knife is rusty <clears throat> but it's sharp I'm not too worried about these letters I'm paying over that because who really cares you know yeah let's get some sandpaper on it see what happens Well, my camera shut off, which tells me that the entire time I was sanding that, I wasn't recording. But it's sanded now. So, missed that part. Maybe I'll find out when I'm editing. <laughs> so, now let me set up somewhere we can uh, get the primer on it. dry and I'm gonna come back and put like another light coat on it well that dry then we'll paint it So I know painting this dash is not going to not going to be a very long video. So I thought I'd throw in some extra content here, some bonus content here at the end. Maybe you're not interested. That's okay. But I got a new seat for this bicycle, and uh, you know, the name of the channel's wrenches and wrenches it doesn't specify what we're going to use the wrench on. So. I'm going to switch out this uncomfortable seat for something a little more comfortable. So, some filler content, or maybe you just really like bicycles and you want to see it. I bought this bicycle and I've rode it around the yard maybe three times. I had big plans for it. But I'm wondering if I've changed the seat out to something a little bit more comfortable, would I be more inclined to ride it? So we'll find out.
All right. Uh, let's take it for a spin. See how that worked out, because I'm, I'm, I'm skeptical. I'm skeptical of that a little bit. It is freaking comfortable, though. Oh, I gotta put some air in the tires. We'll probably do that first. Probably be a good idea. By the way, I don't recommend riding bicycles and flip-flops, but hey, you do you, okay? need to drop it down just a tad it's a little bit high it's thicker than the old seat was don't lose it in the sand <laughs> I think it's pretty easy to set these down because it has a little thing you pull on the seat. Well, I reckon that'll about do it for bicycle seats for today. Uh, this ain't you know a very uh expensive bike it was probably like not the cheapest one they had on walmart's website but the cheapest one where i actually like knew the brand name it's a mongoose uh, if you're a 90s kid like me you know a mongoose is so that's the one i got not the cheapest one but maybe like a notch up you know because i was like i don't know if i'm gonna ride this thing but back in the day you know 2022 of when my wife left and I was learning all these things She's like well you need to get hobbies and you know stay busy and this and that so I'm like, well, I'll get a bicycle and ride it and yeah it wasn't it wasn't fun it wasn't fun I planned on taking it all kinds of places and riding it and I didn't <laughs> but maybe with a comfortable seat on it maybe I will who knows Unfortunately, this didn't turn out the way I was hoping it would. And you were probably screaming at the screen, you got to clean that thing before you paint it. I didn't even think about it. And I got some spots there that are right there, right there, right there, that uh, I probably should have cleaned off. And I probably should have got some clear coat, and I probably should have not used sandable spray paint or primer. But this part turned out pretty good. Now that's three coats, and I don't have any clear, so that's just how it's going to look for now. We're probably going to have to revisit it, make it look a little better in the future. But let me let this dry, and uh, we'll take it down, put it in the truck. Mm-hmm.
you know, maybe it didn't turn out the way I wanted it to. But let's think of it as a teachable moment. This is why you don't skip steps. I skipped over the cleaning part. Not on purpose. I forgot. And I see a spot where... This thing's terrible. I'm getting stuff all over it. But, it is what it is. Didn't tape that off very good. Didn't take that off very good. <laughs> Let's see how I'm going to get this out. I don't have a knife on me. So there we have it pretty crappy but y'all see the look I was going for right yeah we're probably gonna ha I'm either gonna have to sand it down and repaint it in the future or just buy another one I don't know how hard these things are to come by I have to look into it but that's what we got, unfortunately. So if y'all are painting something, don't skip the cleaning step. It's a very important step. <laughs> Get all that, you know, when I was sanding it, and I was holding it to sand it, I was getting all my palm oil. That's the spots that are shiny is where my palm was touching it and putting skin oil on it and... Anyway, it is what it is. If nothing else, you know, you got some bicycle seat action. So you had that going for you. i tell you what, this is a problem, but you know, it's not the end of the world. You know, it's just a piece of plastic in my truck. It can easily be redone, can easily be re-sanded. And they get me thinking about you know things that we consider to be problems i'm gonna read y'all a verse it's a pretty well known verse by most people uh i'm gonna read it anyway uh, romans 8 18 for i reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us he said the sufferings of this present time. Now, in Paul's day, they were for real suffering. They were really being persecuted and put to death for being a Christian. Now, we don't really have that problem these days. Maybe in some countries uh, they do have that problem. But if you're watching this, most likely you live in America or a country similar to America. You don't have that problem where you have to worry about someone killing you because you believe in Jesus. So whatever it is you consider a problem, really, why? Why do we worry about it? Paul says that the sufferings of this present time are nothing compared to what we have coming in the future. And yet we always continually dwell on every problem we have. You know, when I was in the marriage program, and they would talk about how you have to put things in perspective. You know, life, one of the things they used to say all the time is life is not happening to you, it is happening for you. The things in this life that you're going through, and trust me, 
Me and my wife have been separated for a year and a half, and it is not any easier today than it was a year and a half ago. It, it sucks. It's terrible. I want my wife back. But you got to look at it through the lens of what is God trying to teach me in this situation? What is God making me into? And he's using these things I call problems or sufferings. He's using those things to mold me into a better version of myself. So keep things in perspective. Why do we worry about such tiny little problems like, you know, oh, I forgot to put gas in the car and we'll have to stop tomorrow. Oh, I'm, this, I got to get this done tomorrow. I don't know if I'm going to have We you know we think about little things in our life that are bothersome and we consider them problems and we dwell on them and we overthink them when really they're just a drop in the bucket there's much worse things going on in this world much more things things that should require our attention like are our kids saved are they going to go to heaven is my wife saved is my husband saved is my family saved are people that are out there perishing seeing the gospel from me, hearing the gospel from me, and am I making a difference in their lives rather than, oh, i got to get up early in the morning and I'm out of coffee or something like that. Things that really aren't that important of a problem. So let's put them in perspective. Is your problem a life and death, an eternal problem, or is it just a minor inconvenience that some people wish they had? Some people wish they had the problems you got. All right. So, like again, I tell you, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I don't know how you get through this life without Him. He's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother, and uh, I rely on Him all the time. Just this morning, some stuff went down that just kind of took me off guard some things at church and man i cried the whole way home because it was a very similar situation to what i'm going through and i just don't understand it 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 doesn't make me mad at people like there's no individual person for me to point at and be like well they're bad they're wrong it makes me mad at sin at the devil that things like this that should not happen do happen but i have to keep in perspective that even though i don't understand it right now god has a reason for it whatever you're going through god has a reason for it and if you're not saved that's part of the reason (laughs) he's trying to get you to understand that you're a sinner in need of a savior and uh he's trying to get you to turn to him but anyway if you don't know jesus christ as your lord savior go read first corinthians chapter 15 verses 1 through 4 and learn what it is you need to believe in to be saved. I appreciate you watching this video. I know it is, it ain't the greatest video, I'll be honest. And the results, you know, it might would have, it might would have made out all right if the end result would have been good. But even the end result wasn't bad. But you know, you watch other YouTube channels and they do stuff. Maybe they're way more experienced and knowledgeable than I am, and it turns out looking so good. Not not so much here. You know, we're kind of learning as we go. All right. So I appreciate you checking out the video today. I know it wasn't the greatest, but like I said, the next two weekends, I'm going to be at the Mount Dora Highland Games next weekend. And I'm going to be right here in home at the Northeast Florida Highland Games uh, the weekend after that. So my next two weekends, I'm going to be in a kilt. I love wearing a kilt. So if you're going to be at those events... Maybe look for me, and I hope to see you there. But uh, that's going to do it for today. Until next time, you might regret buying that Ford, but you'll never regret being forgiven. See y'all next time.